welcome to this section on the use of animals in psychological research. And this lecture will look at you know, the reasons why psychologists use animals in some of their research. And then we'll look at some of the um, arguments against the use of animals in research. And then we'll conclude by looking at some of the major benefits that psychology has gained from the use of animal research. The truth is that research with non-human animals occupies a central and essential role in psychology and related fields. Both old and new discoveries from animal research continue to play a key role in advancing our understanding of human behavior. Animal research plays an integral role in scientific study that are relevant not only to furthering our basic understanding and knowledge, but also to informing clinical practice and public health policy. So in this section, we'll look at both the theoretical and practical reasons for the use of animals in psychological research. We'll also address the arguments or reasons against the use of animals in scientific research and some benefits psychology has gained from animal research. So let's start. Use of animals. Psychologists do research to learn more about behavior in order to advance the welfare of humans. Researchers and other scientists frequently use animals to conduct research that cannot be carried out with human beings. For example, experiments on early separation from our parents will not be possible. We can't use human beings. Studies that want to look at you know, the brain, how the brain structure is formed, brain mm -hmm. lesions, we cannot use human beings because the damage that will be caused to human beings in these studies may not be reversible. And so psychologists most of the time falls on animals. So why do psychologists study animals? Two key reasons, theoretical reasons and practical reasons. Theoretical reasons, there are three under the theoretical reasons. Darwin's theory of evolution, the structure and functions of the central nervous system, and then the principle of parsimony. Darwin's theory of evolution says that human beings have evolved from, you know, lower animals. And if this is the case, then for us to understand human beings, we need to first understand the lower animals. Darwin argued that there are some form of similarities and continuity among all animals. All known animals have evolved from a common ancestor. So we all have certain things in common. And so for us to understand human beings, we need to understand animals. So that is one of the theoretical reasons why we use animals in our research, because of the similarity and the fact that we are all coming from the same source. The second has to do with the structure and function of the central nervous system. If you look at the brain structure of human beings and the brain structures of certain animals, they are so similar. Eviden evidence from research has shown that the structure and functions of the central nervous system of both humans and primates, especially mammals, are similar and they perform the same function. And so if we cannot subject human beings to those treatments, then why not use animals? So that is another reason why animals are used. And then thirdly has to do with the principle of parsimony. If there are two things that can explain the reason why something is happening, and one is simple, then it doesn't make sense to be holding on to the complex explanation. So if human beings are similar, we are coming from the same source, and most of the time, some of these things, we perform the same function, then it's better for us to hold on to what is happening in the lower animals. In other words, the whole argument is that, you know, if animals are lower than humans on the evolutionary ladder, then knowledge gained from the study of animals 
might provide an insight to what might happen with human beings. So in effect, results from the study of animals will facilitate hypothesis, formulation, and testing on some aspects of human behavior, not all, but on some aspects. So these are the reasons that you know, we fall on animals. Animals are quite simple compared to human beings. And if they can give us an insight because we are coming from a common soul, then it makes sense for us to study them in an attempt to understand human beings better. The practical reasons why animals are used is that animals are readily and easily available. Animals are there. Researchers do not need you know, the consent of animals, unlike human beings. They don't need to sign any document that this, this, and that. You will not do me this. They are just there. And their numbers are also huge. So it's a practical reason why we follow them. Now, the animals are also good for genetic and generational studies. You know, most animals, they have a very short lifespan. So if you want to study them, you'll be able to do it and finish within the course of your career. But when it comes to human beings, you cannot pick. By the time you become a full-grown researcher, you just have some few years to live before you die. So you cannot now start studying a baby to get to know everything to the time that baby will die. You cannot finish it. But with animals, we can study several generations within the course of our lives. And then also, animal research are less expensive. Less expensive. You don't need to pay them any compensation, unlike if you want to engage in human being. And then there are certain studies that you know, if something should go bad, the harm that will be caused will not be reversible. You know, the test of new drugs and studies involving irreversible damage, you know, brain lesions and all that, we cannot use human beings. Because if something should go wrong, you know, the harm cannot be reversed. And then sometimes ethical reasons. Human beings cannot be subjected to certain you know, treatments in an experiment, and so we cannot do that. And then finally, animals also provide a better understanding. The use of pets provide some insights into the animal behavior. They, by studying them, we are able to also learn a lot about the animals. So these are some practical reasons why we, 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 we use animals in the study. You know, by studying the animals themselves, we'll also be able to know how to treat them better. We'll also be able to come up with medicine that will benefit them, not only us, but will also benefit the animals. So these are some of the practical reasons why we use animals in research. What, is the, what are the key arguments for those against the use of animals, those who are saying that animals should not be used in a research? Basically, the argument is that um, you know, animals are different from human beings. Whether we share similarities in brain structure and whatever it is, the basic thing is that an animal is an animal. A human being is a human being. So the two species are completely different. Granted that there are some level of similarity between the two species, it might be too remote and insignificant to allow for the kind of comparison being made between humans and animals. So that is the key argument why they don't want psychologists to use animals. And they also believe that human behavior is tied to a culture. So whatever Ghanaians will be engaging will be different from what Japanese will be concerned with and things like that. And so it doesn't make sense to use human beings which does not have a culture in trying to understand human beings. It is unacceptable to study animals in areas such as language and emotions and then assume outcome could be applied to human beings because both species have different levels and forms of language. The kind of things they engage in are different from what we human beings do. So those are some of the, the arguments that they, they, they talk about. Opponents of the use of animals say, this is a clear example of biological as well as cultural influences and differences between animals and human beings. But the fact is we cannot do away with animal research. We need them. 
we need them, especially because of the, both the theoretical and practical reasons that I've talked about. Now, another argument that they raise is that most of the animals that are used in research are those that have been, you know, raised in labs. And they believe that the lab conditions are different from those animals that are in the real world. So it doesn't, it doesn't contribute much to scientific progress if we still use such animals. We just subject them to unnecessary pain and harm. We don't treat them humanely as we do to human beings. That notwithstanding, you know, psychology has gained a lot from the research on animals, which I want us to look at briefly, the importance of animal in psychological research. Major contributor, animal research is a major contributor to our knowledge of basic learning and motivational processes. Our understanding of how hunger, thirst, and reproduction in human beings have been influenced greatly by animal research. And then also critical information about the sensory processes, taste, vision, hearing, and pain research have all been influenced by animal research. And then also understanding of a range of psychoactive drugs. Some of the drugs that we use to treat psychological disorders have all been made possible because of experiments with animals. And then the development of new drugs for treatment of anxiety, schizophrenia, depression have all been possible with experiments that have been done on animals. And then animal research has also contributed to our understanding of animals themselves. As I said, psychology is concerned with behavior and mental processes. Behavior of both you know, human beings and animals, mental processes of human beings and animals. So through that research, we've also been able to understand them better. Our understanding of our central nervous system, how the neurotransmitters are, you know, move from one to the other, their effect on behavior and all that have all been made possible based on research with animals. So whilst there's good argument for the use of animals and a very good counter argument that psychology should not use animals, if you weigh the two, it is clear that human beings have benefited a lot from the use of animals. And this argument, I believe, will not be ending now. Psychology for many years to come, we will still use animals in their research because of the enormous benefits they have contributed to the field. So this is what we have to know as far as research with animals in psychology is concerned. Thank you.